Hi there, I'm John Leach, and you're watching Arc Fishing. This video is sponsored by my book, Diary of a Fisherman, Volume 2. Links will be in the description below of all the online bookstores of where you can purchase my book. Okay, welcome to another edition of Arc Fishing. My apologies up front, but for some reason I lost audio in this video. Um, I don't know what happened. Either my external microphone was not plugged in correctly, or at the end of this fishing trip, I dropped the GoPro in the water. It was a GoPro Hero 4, and I didn't have the waterproof case on it. Um, I quick grabbed it. I took the SD card out. I was able to recover the, the footage. However, however, the camera is obviously shot. It won't turn on, but I was able to salvage the footage. So somehow I lost the sound. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do a voiceover um, for the rest of the video. There'll be a section here where I did get some good footage from my GoPro Hero 8, um, where you'll hear me talking. Um, I did catch, I don't know, probably close to a dozen fish, give or take. I caught mostly rock bass, several smallmouth bass, and one largemouth bass. And I am fishing here on the Schuylkill River um, in the state of Pennsylvania. All right, so let's get into the video, and I'll start showing you a whole bunch of fish catches. And uh, at the end of this video, I'll show you the lure and the rig that I was using and the rod and reel that I was using. All right, here we go. Okay, so here's the very first fish I caught, which was a smallmouth bass. And you'll see here I'm catching on the Nico Rig Helgermite um, that I ordered off of Amazon. I love watching a fishing channel called Creek Fishing Adventures with John, and he's the one that introduced me to this lure via video. Um, and I tried it this day and it just happened to work. So there you go. A very nice little nice smallmouth bass out of the Schuylkill River. Very healthy fish. Clean. No scars. No marks. You can always tell a good healthy river system um, by the... There you go. I'm showing the Helger mite. Um, that's the lure I'm using. I'm using um, six pound test clear monofilament line. Um, so there you go. Okay. Here's the second fish I caught out of the Schuylkill River. It's a nice fat um, small rock bass. Well, not necessarily small, but nice one. Like I was saying earlier, you can tell how healthy a river or waterway is and by how healthy the fish are. And again, this is a beautiful, healthy rock bass, a decent size. I caught it on the um, Nico Rig Helg Mite. And there I, I'm showing it to you again. That's the lure I'm catching the fish on. Um, I threw a Ned Rig, some spinners, a couple other different things. And I couldn't no, hit on nothing. As soon as I started throwing that Nico Hel Helg Mite, that's when I started catching fish. I, it must have been what they've been feeding on that day. Because everything else I was throwing on, they just they wouldn't even look at it. They, they wouldn't touch it. They, I wouldn't get no hits, no bites. Um, as soon as I threw the hunger mic, I started getting hits. Okay, so here we go. I got another fish hooked up. I'm trying to get him into the kayak. Um, I'm using a St. Croix Legend 6 foot 3 spinning rod and a Quantum Smoke 25 series uh, fishing reel. And here we got a nice smallmouth bass. Um, came out of those. If you look over, you see the rocks. It's, he was suspended down at the rock. It's real shallow and it drops off. And that's a nice little fat smallmouth. And um, like I said, he was suspended and hang, hanging out from those rocks. Um, I believe the water there is about six feet deep. Um, I probably caught him out five or six feet deep. And again, look how healthy this fish is. These fish are so beautiful, so healthy, so clean. Um, great river system. The water was clear. I could see bottom probably up to about five feet deep easily. Um, and there we go, catch and release. 
very nice smallmouth bass. Um, finally started getting, it was a lot of frustrations earlier in the day, and then once I put the Helgram right on, that's when fishing finally got better. I had to work through all the frustrations to get to that point, but then again, I'm showing you the rod and reel and the setup I'm using. Um, I am using um, six pound test, clear monofilament by suffix, and I literally just spooled that on. I have another rod behind me. I don't think I used it in this part of the video. I did use it earlier. It was a G Loomis and I had four pound test line. I was using a Thomas double blade, which I always catch fish on. And I couldn't believe that day they would not hit the Thomas double blade. That's the first that's ever happened to me. I, that, that's one of my go-to lures. If nothing else works, a Thomas double blade always works. And that day it just wouldn't, but the Eco Rig Hugger Mite did. And so there you go, there are the results another nice rock bass landed i found a nice honey hole. if you take notice i'm in the same spot i just happened to come down and find this beautiful honey hole they were just stacked in there um a bunch of rock bass and then a few small mouth and then you'll see later i couldn't believe it there was a nice little large mouth in there with him which i had no idea that'd be a large mouth bass especially in that section of the river but there's a beautiful rock bass just showing up close i was joking around trying to make it look real big here that's why i was putting it so close to the camera um just messing around um, but there we go catch and release nice rock bass in that honey hole and uh, you're gonna see some more being caught here in a second one more thing I forgot to mention um, I had a, originally had a, a regular jig head hook on there and I lost the one rig and then here I switched over to Ned rig jet jig head and it actually worked really well another fish on it was getting to the point where almost every cast or every other cast I was hooking into a fish and most of them landed. I don't know a few that were short striking. They hit the tail and come off. This one I obviously hooked. Some of them, I, they hooked it way down. And I don't know if this fish or none, you'll see. They, they're, I mean, they were feeding aggressively. A lot of them had that hanging right way down inside their mouth. Um, one, I had to use my pliers to get it out. But they were hungry. They were aggressive. And it was just, I was at the right place at the right time with the right lure on that particular day. Um, took a while to get to that point, but I finally got there. And another left turn. I mean, and another rock bass. <laughs> yeah, just rock bass at the rock bass. Here's another. This is a fat one. It's a little football. Um, but they're fun to catch. I mean, catch them on light line like that. Um, they give a little a good fight for small fish. Um, I know I've actually ever eaten one of these. I am they're a pretty good pan fish and probably very edible. Um, maybe I have to try that this year. Um, this is one. Yeah, he just swallowed this thing way down deep. Like I said, they were fe feeding so aggressively. They wanted that lure. They were hungry. Um, I think these fish were right in the pre-spawn, getting ready to spawn. I think that's why they were stacked in there. Um, and they're so schooling fish, but I just had such a hard time to hook. I finally got the hook after a while to use my pliers, um, but he had that hook deep. Um, thankfully, I was able to get the hook out, release him. He swam us away safely. He was fine. Um, very minimal blood, no injury. Um, <laughs> I just couldn't believe, like, how deep he had the hook in there, how aggressive they were feeding him. It was a lot of fun catching them um but yes yeah, so you'll see here in a few seconds that uh, i finally get the hook to pop out and i do release a fish and throw him back in there and he swims off just fine um nice little handy pliers i have and, I, and you notice i'm in tether i have everything on that kayak tethered i learned my lesson you don't have anything on that kayak that's not tethered that's how you lose stuff Again, another rock bass. Just rock bass after rock bass after rock bass. It's like they just couldn't resist this lure. Um, just using the same lure, same rig over and over again. What's nice is that lure stretches so it, like, it doesn't tear. So I just keep using it and reusing it. Just keep, get right back into that honey hole while they're feeding aggressively. And then there you go. Beautiful, healthy rock bass um, in that sweet honey hole. And you take notice, I'm still at the same spot. I haven't moved, relocated, went up or down the river. I'm still in the same spot. Um, so, all right, catch and release. Look at that rod tip pin. I thought for sure I had some, I knew I had some decent one at first. I thought a really decent smallmouth. I was really surprised by this catch. I did not expect to catch a decent largemouth bass out of the Schuylkill River, especially in that section of the river. So, I mean, it's not a trophy, but it's a nice largemouth bass, especially for river fishing. That was an unexpected catch. Like I said, I've, I knew I had something decent on it. And at first I thought, well, I got a decent smallmouth. And then when I pulled them up out of the river, I was like, whoa nice largemouth bass that was a, a very nice sweet surprise um especially after catching so many rock bass in a row beautiful health look again beautiful healthy largemouth bass very healthy very clean beautiful fish a gr great sign of a good clean uh, river system a, a clean healthy fishery um 
just just fantastic. Let me switch over the real camera so you can see what's going on. Bass out of the Schuylkill River, man. It's fantastic. All right, catch and release. I'm telling you, it's a sweet little honey hole. Check that out. Nice healthy rock bass. All right, catch him on these. I'm loving this honey hole. Okay, I threw right back out there after releasing that large enough bass, and what do you know, another rock bass. Tony, man, they're just stacked in there and just love that hugamite lure. It was such a fun day of fishing. Like I said, it was, I fished probably a good two hours before I came down the spot. I went way up the river and I drifted down. I was using my power pole and stop at different places until I finally came across this spot in Skookle River. Um, finally found the honey hole, finally found the right lure. And so I decided to stay there and I'm so glad I did. It, it finally paid off. And there you go, I'm showing you stretching that hug. I mean, look how it stretches, it doesn't tear. It's reusable, it, I mean, you use it over and over and over again. Okay, this is the second to last fish I caught, which obviously was another rock bass. The storm was rolling in, clouds were getting dark. Um, so this is the second last one. These next two fish are gonna be both rock bass, but again, same lure, Nico Hegermite. I'm using a Ned Rig jig, jig head. Um, beautiful, fat, little rock bass out of the school girls. Again, they're healthy, beautiful fish. Um, just a love the way they fight on light line. Fun to catch. Um, I imagine they're probably good eating. I'm hoping to find out this year. I'm, I think I'm going to keep a few down the road and just fry one or two up to see how they taste. There you go, catch and release. Oh, there we go. Here comes the last fish of the day. Beautiful, fat rock bass. Look at that. Beautiful, fat football. Um, this one again got hooked real good. I mean, this fish wanted that lure. They grabbed it, was aggressive, got hooked real good. I get again, I had to use my pliers to get the hook back out. Um, and once again, I have it tethered. You take notice, I have everything on there tethered. You see in my rear camera pole, I have that red um, pull noodle, which will, if it falls off, it'll float. Plus, I have it tethered. Um, I've already lost equipment off a kayak uh, t two times in the years past, and I learned everything on that kayak is tethered. And some things have a pull noodle attached to it, so if it falls off, it'll float, not sink. Um, I've lost two rods, two reels. Um, actually, I lost three. I was able to recover one out of the three. Um, again, look, I'm struggling to get that hook out because he swallowed it so deep in there. I had to really use the pliers to get that hook out. They're just feeding so aggressively um, that particular day. Um, you can see it's getting a little cloudy dark, but in front of me, you can't see it on the camera. Um, they were calling for severe thunderstorms and thunder watch, and it got really windy. Um, right as I load up the kayak, it started getting really, really windy. I, so I, got, I was watching the sky the whole time. I knew it was coming. I always keep an eye on the weather. I check the weather channel um, on the internet. And you know, I, I, the fishing was just so good. I didn't want to leave because the fishing was so good. And I, I was looking at the clouds like, I got to get out of here as much as I want to stay. That storm just rolling in. So, and, and like I said, look, you could tell I'm struggling to get this hook out because it was hooked so deep and it was hooked so good. But I, I did eventually get that hook out. There you go. It just finally fell out. That fish was fine. I don't think that one was bleeding at all. I did. Uh, you'll see how I release a fish. He swims off just fine. Every fish I caught, I released. I didn't keep any. any ones, every one of them swimmed off, swimmed off fine. Um, no injuries sustained to any of those fish. All right. Great day of fishing. All right, so let me show you what I was using um, on the Schuylkill River. Like I said earlier, I used a Ned Rig, a Thomas Double Blade, a couple other different lures, soft plastic minnows, and stuff I know for a fact works and works really good in that river. For whatever reason, the bass did not want those lures. And the only thing I got to hit on was a Nico um, Helgen Mite. So this is the pack that I originally bought. I bought this while I was at Amazon. I have one left, actually two left. One's on my rod and reel right now. And this is the last one I'm having to pack it. 
Um, let me pull this out of here. What's really cool is these things stretch, which is really cool. Now, I originally had um, this jig. I bought this jig head with it. That's what I originally had on it. And then I was using a snap swivel, which I rarely ever used. I don't like using them because I was hung up and then never forgot. I forgot to check my snap swivel and it was open. And that's cast. I casted it and it flew off and I lost my rig. So what I did is I put another one on and I used the Ned rig. So I, I used one of these and that did the trick. So a Ned rig jig head will work on the Nico rig Helger might lure. Um, worked really well. Um, and I just happened to wait at the right spot and found a bunch of nice fish. I caught rock bass, smallmouth bass, and a largemouth bass. Um, so I'm really liking that Nico Rig Helger might. So here's here's a brand new pack I bought. I was down in Maryland this past weekend and um, I bought these at a tackle shop down there. And they were $8.99. I think it's about to go on price on Amazon too. I'll put a link down in the description um, where you get these on Amazon for about the same price too. And that's just for um, a pack of four of these. That does include a jig head. And the color I got is called, um, I think one I got was called natural. It comes in different colors. It comes in green pumpkin, I think blue. I, th I saw a silver one, which I thought was strange. But and black i saw black but i could be a good color but both of them i bought came in not yet yeah, natural um that's the color i bought so again like i said i'll put a link down in the description um of where i purchased these on amazon the first time and the second time i got these at a tackle shop they're hard to find in tackle shops some are getting them in where i live here in pennsylvania i haven't seen any in the tackle shops um, i drove down to maryland to do some shad fishing and then i found some so Hopefully they'll start getting into the tackle shops. They're actually made in Japan, so they're imported. It's probably one of the reasons why they're hard hitting the tackle shops right now. All right, again, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.